What is up, Retromaniacs? Welcome to Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name is Mike, and I am heavily medicated and therefore not responsible for anything I may say this episode. And I am joined by two world-renowned experts in the field of anime dating simulation. They are E.P. Eric Pahalik and Joe Day. What, what's up, guys? I, I was kind of hoping the intro would be, and two men who are still undefeated versus COVID. Joe Day and Eric Bahawick. That's yes, what I'm thinking. Yes. Well, I I did bring my mask, so I can put my mask on over my headphone here, so I don't get you guys sick. Because we're barely six feet away I at this. Don't want to get you sick during the podcast. I don't know. I'm not really sure that's how it works, but I yeah, maybe I don't D- know. Does your heavily medicated uh, ruling kind of work for both for both of us too? Like, sure, why not? If you will, it yeah. covers us, whatever we say. One of those like episodes, yeah. So, <laughs> might be a fun one for all the wrong reasons, but yeah. All the right reasons. All, all right. the right reasons, <laughs> one or the other. So what's new, guys? Well, I don't, I don't have COVID. <laughs> That's good. Same, same. That is good. Uh, not, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, EP, EP will probably plug it too, but I've been following along with your stack sale and it's kind of making me nervous because I'm trying to put cards aside for my stack sale and I'm looking at yours going, oh man, this is, mine's going to be such a penance. It's going to be a drop <laughs> in the ocean compared to Mike. So uh, yeah, I'm a little nervous about that, but I've been, I've been pulling cards for that. That's, that's kind of consumed me for the last few days. Yeah, same here. I know. Just uh, I, anytime I see a, a stack, is like, oh, I got that card. I got that card. That's a cool card. I remember that card? <laughs> then that he posts like two where that I've not seen any of these cards, and I want half of them on both of the stacks. <laughs> like it's just it's so so cool to see. Um, it's a lot, it's fun to reminisce a, a lot of stuff. Fun to see the stuff that I own, and then fun to see the stuff that like man, that's a really cool Bernie Williams card. I should probably I should probably start a stack. And then yeah. I'm looking at it from the point of view of. Okay, he's been selling uh, Troy Aikman cards. I'm pulling my <laughs> Troy Aikman cards. He's been selling, you know, he hasn't done great on Peyton Manning. I, okay, maybe I don't need a lot of Peyton Manning. You know, so I, that's how I've been looking at it. EP's just like crying a river of nostalgia <laughs> and, uh, and 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 saying, I want to buy all these cards. Meanwhile, I'm like, take all mine. Take mine, EP. I'll, I'll sell them to you at wholesale. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really been doing well with it so far. I have, I think about a thousand cards claimed so far in the first week have a week to go and i missed a night too because i just didn't physically feel up to it on friday i just couldn't do it but but yeah i'm i'm very surprised and humbled so somewhat because like crazy the number of cards like and and it's cool you know i know it's gonna sound cheesy but i like i like doing this like it's really i enjoy it's that dealer in me i've always enjoyed being able to get collectors cards that they like you know and you know i have all kinds of cards that i i (laughs) never imagined would sell like i had a kermit the frog that was a chicago blackhawks head Uh, logo and it was like the coolest thing and somebody bought that and i did have to push last night i had a lance berkman uh, gold refractor numbered out of 50 for a dollar in my sale and nobody was buying it and i'm like come on guys it's numbered out of 50 dude right. hit 296 he had like 370 <laughs> career home runs like it's worth a dollar and somebody right. finally bought it and made my night yeah. but yeah keeping me busy i'm actually i'm not even making this up i have like the inside of my arm here is like sore from writing down all of the cards for everybody for the last week but crazy yeah crazy very crazy but is it what you expected or more or less than you expected more way more yeah i mean didn't really know what to expect trying to do something on like such a huge scale but really been successful so far and i'm very happy with it so cool cool but you know we could talk about my cards all day long i'm sure joe (laughs) could talk about his tom brady cards all day long but we're not here to do that nobody (laughs) wants to hear it um anything happened this week in the hobby that we need to talk about we can skip right out of the news right we don't really there's there's nothing going on right no no one's talking about it nobody Uh, no one's (laughs) talking about this stuff nobody is talking about 1986 Fleer basketball boxes being opened at the national sponsored by whatnot i guess they bought the box and 
had a number of big content creators and influencers on stage and main stage. Why we weren't the there? Packs. Kind of confused. I, yeah, I we don't the know invite, why they missed you. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Sports Card Radio has been all over this. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm going to link his videos in the description. Go watch them first and come back and listen to us because we're just giving our opinion on it. But he did all the legwork like really kind of amazing how quickly he put this all together like found where the box wow. came from found mm -hmm. other stuff out about the box but yeah the main the major issue is that it's pretty well known in collecting circles that 86 Fleer basketball has a certain sequence the cards come in they have two parallel sequences they run in 66 cards apart so you're going to start with one number next card is going to be 66 more than that and then they're going to decrease from there so you know you're going from card 34 to card 100 and then you're going to 33 to card 99 so you should know like if you watch breaks of it you see it you know that people know when the jordan's coming up because you see a clark kellogg you know that two right. cards later you should have michael jordan yeah. and you know I even know that. Yeah. I even know that. <laughs> and that's been known for a long time. I mean, they the sequence can flip at any point in a box. So, like, just because you have Clark Kellogg, like, if you didn't get Michael Jordan, it, it can happen because the sequence could have flipped there. But then it continues back in the same sequence. Well, the box that was opened at the National by the influencers, all the cards were just in alphabetical and numerical order. Mm -hmm. They were all just descending numbers and shouldn't be that way. People called that out, said it shouldn't be that way. Uh, originally, Sports Card Radio like didn't even throw BBCE under the he bus didn't. on that because mm -hmm. he figured like this was so egregious that somebody had to have taken a BBC E rap and put it on it. Like that there was no way that that could have ever happened on something they actually authenticated. Well, turns out over the course of the next couple of videos, they actually did, you know, authenticate it. The same guy that authenticated Logan Paul's Pokemon case that had GI <laughs> Joe cards in it also authenticated this. And he found out that the box, he he saw the number of the box, the, the authentication on mm -hmm. Pac-Man's video, because you could see clearly on the back. He found out that it was sold through Golden, and it was originally owned by a place called Triple Double Sports Cards, which is kind of key in this, I to the whole story and stuff, because they actually have a video with steve hart who is the guy who authenticates this stuff for bbc and by the way sports car radio points out too is also a pack authenticator for psa mm -hmm. the same guy and in the video with triple double sports cards they go over the box and they had two car two packs of cards that he didn't authenticate from the box and he sent them back and he replaced them with other packs which you know i didn't really understand it but this is what's called a built box some people call it a frankenstein box but a lot of the vintage stuff apparently is made up of packs that weren't originally all together in that box so in that video though he gave him the two back he said the one he couldn't authenticate because the flap had been like the one flap had been unsealed, although the wrapper was still sealed, but you could see on the back there was a Michael Jordan sticker. So they didn't authenticate that. And he said the other one had signs that it had been resealed. And the big point from this story is the guy from Triple Double Sports Cards opened up that pack. And that pack, which they said was resealed, had cards that were in sequential order just like the cards that were be being opened at the national wow. so like that's a key part of this story because he picked one pack out of there and said that that was tampered with but all the other ones in there were fine mm -hmm. and 
the ones that he said were fine had the same sequence of cards in it as the one he said was tampered with. Yeah. I'll let you guys talk a little bit and we'll go from there. <laughs> well, first I want to give a huge shout out to Mike there for uh, recapping everything on with, yeah. with COVID. This is the most he's talked <laughs> in a row and it's coming off of coming off of no, no breath and, uh, and, and brain fog. Brain fog right? brain fog, <laughs> right. But um, yeah. So uh, shout out to sports card radio. We, we talked about them during our uh, top content creators video that we did, uh, you know, a couple months back they're just, you know, some people don't like them. Some people think they're negative. I think some of their negativity is necessary because of stuff like this. I mean, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous to think. And the other point he made was Steve Hart comes out and says, oh, this is a unicorn box. We've mm -hmm. never seen a box, you know, like it, it can happen, but it's 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 so rare. And and Sports Card Radio made the point. Well, if that's the case, then why did you pull the packs out and then then build it you know and mm -hmm. it also makes me wonder if i'm buying a frankenstein box on golden who's to say the two packs they didn't take out had two jordans in? like why would someone i would never i mean not that i could afford it anyway but i would never buy something that's a built box because the two packs that they took out could have been two jordan cards you know at that point you're getting you know everything else which is cool but you know you're sitting there with a box that's sealed with bbc bbce wrapping and possibly no jordans in it i i i don't understand why someone would, would do that or be okay with it i i wanted to wonder how they can tell like how does bbc Eve tell if it's a frankenstein box or a regular box when it comes to stuff that you know they, maybe maybe it wasn't sealed before you know they have little drones that they fly exactly. into the pack. <laughs> so, hey like how how, how, could, how can how can they tell though and like when you when you find those two packs and you find one that looks like it's been tampered with do you then like double check everything else like don't you don't you doesn't that like throw the rest of the box in question then like wouldn't you be concerned if you're somebody right. that works for a company that is supposed to be authenticating this stuff do you like take a deep breath and say listen i don't know if we can authenticate this box because this one mm -hmm. pack clearly show something like i, I just i and them, right. that's that's my my opinion um and then the whole thing of taking two packs out and then replace putting two other packs in just seems doesn't seem it, it, something smells off about that to me yeah like like you really do wonder if you find a pack that you say was resealed in a box like that automatically Did they throws, stop at one yeah, <laughs> yeah like, there's no why way would somebody one, right? open yeah. one yeah of that so and like it also, automatically should throw the whole box into question and right. mm -hmm. i don't know how you can just look at the other packs and say oh yeah they're fine like that blows my mind you know back in back in the day and we've talked about this on on other pods and i'm i've mentioned it during some box breaks that that i've done or rips that i've done that you know back in the day card shop owners would know the sequence of where the holograms were right in like a Marvel box or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I've opened a, I opened a box recently of DC cards where they knew where the specter cards were. Cause I didn't get any inserts. Like it's impossible to, to have a box and not have inserts in it when they're almost guaranteed. So someone searched the box. I mean, this type of stuff has been going on for, for a long, long time, but, the difference is that box of Marvel back in 1990 and even today is worth at the maximum seven, 800 bucks. And who really cares about the, ho the holograms aren't really what you're looking for, right? You're looking for cards to send in to get graded. You know, I, when I see something like that on eBay, like 36 unopened packs of Marvel universe, I'm cool with it. I'll buy that because I just want to rip it open. I want the cards mm -hmm. for my, my sales. I want to maybe send some stuff off to be graded. When you're talking about an 86, 87, where the Jordan is just worth so much money, the opening that up after finding out it's a built box, it wouldn't have surprised me if no one found Jordans. Like, would it have surprised either of you if they opened up all the packs and there was not a single Jordan card? Now, they, they did find Jordans. They did find two Jordans. Yes. Right. They did. And they were graded PSA 7, 6s or 7s. Yeah, they were a little mm -hmm. lower grade, yeah. Right. And everything was kind of low grade. I mean, the the hi hypothesis that Sports Card Radio originally said was it looks like someone just opened up these packs after they got them from BBCE. Again, he wasn't throwing Steve Hart under the bus in the first video. And he said what what he thinks happened was someone took the cards out, the fresh cards, and then put in an old set 
that was in lower mm -hmm. condition or two sets or whatever it shook out to be. And that's why they were in sequential order. I think that's what did happen. But then it, then it was sent to BBCE to be authenticated and mm -hmm. they must've just screwed up two of the packs. Otherwise the whole box would have been, you know, this isn't even a Frankenstein box. This is 36 packs that came to us and they all look good. And that's kind of bad. It makes, makes you wonder how, and we talked about this before, how much other stuff is out there that's, that's either being replaced with uh, legend of the five rings or, mm -hmm you know, uh, Pokemon with, with GI Joe or, you know, the, um, what was it? National treasures, right? Mm -hmm. You know? And, and so you wonder how much other stuff is out there. That's authentic. That really isn't. It's, just, it's something else completely, or it's, it's just replacement cards that someone wanted to get rid of and get the fresh cards out of. Yeah. And, you know, moving on Steve Hart's response to all this I mean, I'll, I'll just summarize it for you. Basically saying that there is randomness in the production and that even if there's a known sequence, something could be released that isn't in that sequence. So basically he was coming up with a coverall to cover anything and everything that ever might happen in the future with cards like this to say you know nothing we could do about it this is just right. a random thing that happens like I'm, i mean i'm calling bs yeah. like you can't that you can't do that you have this company who's supposed to be offering a service which first of all by the way too in their disclaimers they don't like guarantee anything so why why are we putting any kind of monetary value into his service anyway like i it just blows my mind and to have something so high profile like this happen in the hobby and then come out and say that you, you don't care. You're you figure, Oh, well, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm the premier guy at doing this. And maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I mean, there's some pretty high profile misses on his resume, but, but the video of him going, we all got duped, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like him <laughs> saying that at during, you know, to Logan Paul, how, how opening the box of Pokemon wasn't the end of that company is beyond me. Like sports card people just gave it a pass because it was Pokemon, but like the Pokemon people had a lot of concerns about that case. And yet, you know, he went into a market that he didn't really know how to do. And he, you know, what a million dollar was a couple million. I don't even remember. It was over anymore, a million but, for sure. But yeah. to authenticate that when you don't have the, the wherewithal and the knowledge of it to do that like just it, it's like hubris on a another level like he's just i i think he must really believe his own press or something to think that he could do that ep you're a pokemon guy huge you... huge pokemon guy so, more than us <laughs> yeah like, but big like seriously like that should have been the end of that company shouldn't it uh, yes and no. I mean, the thing is, I don't know like how many people, you know, were witness to that or, or even how many people in, in the hobby know, know about that or are deep enough in to know about that. A lot of people just buy, buy boxes or whatever. I guess people who buy high end stuff from BBCE probably are aware of it and probably, probably know it. And that's probably their, we their even made the joke of the so. national. Remember, we even made the joke of yeah. this BBCE yeah. stand to the now. I mean, I want to go back and make a couple more jokes, you know, at this point. <laughs> I, I th I Mike, think did you open up your 89 score yet? I did what's not. In, what's no. in those packs? <laughs> I want to know. I can't wait to find out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one of the, the really bad thing, it's almost the HGA ish the, along those levels is his response. Like, mm. sure, the, there's randomness. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Things can happen. But what are the odds? Like, what, what are the odds that it goes from being this normal sequence mm -hmm. to then being in, in sequential order? Yeah. Like what, what cards come in such sequential order and packs? There's no like, way. There's yeah, no there's way. Absolutely no way. Yeah. yeah. And and the thing that cracks me up Poor too, there's, there's other situations where I sit and I'll watch like box breaks, right? So there was, I forget what product it was. It was a new product, but you opened up a case, you know, fresh case. And it, I think it was on Layton and they opened up the first one and they got the case hit and they got the big QB RPA. Okay. It was in one box. Okay, I watched the next case. Same thing happened. And I'm thinking people selling boxes like this, if you bought a case, you'd weigh it, find the find the 
one that is a little bit heavier, open that up, and then sell the individual boxes knowing there's no chance of getting a big-time QB RPA, you know, uh, RPA, and there's no chance of getting the case hit. So you're kind of searching that case too. It just – there are so many ways that people try and scam mm -hmm. other people to make a buck in this hobby. It's one of the – it's it's – I can't think of another hobby as bad. There's so many bad actors constantly in this hobby. And this, it would be like saying that it's just randomness, right? I've, 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 op or I've watched people open box after box after box of Bowman football, 2000 Bowman football, obviously for obvious reasons, right? It would be like not having a Tom Brady in there. Like, oh, it's, it's, hey, I don't know. You know, it has every other card and maybe two Sean Alexanders in it. Let's just say for the sake of argument. Well, yeah, someone found the Brady and then repackaged that box. You can tell it's not, it's not, oh, there's just randomness in this. No, there's not. I mean, most, most cards are packed at a certain way from the factory. That's always mm -hmm. how it's been. And to say it's randomness is total crap. And it, like you said, Mike, it's just a catch all to cover his mm -hmm. own ass yeah. because he doesn't want to be thrown under. I mean, two huge misses and how many, how many misses do we not even know about? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that are still sealed sitting on a shelf somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And you know, the real question I have is why is this hobby so accepting of all the scamming that goes on? Like, you see it at a high level. This, you know, the Pokemon case, what had GI Joe cards, the 86 Fleer basketball had sequentially numbered cards. You had backyard breaks, you know, not giving away the card they pull yet. Everybody just goes about their business. You know, it, it's brought up in the news and people talk and complain about it, but nothing ever changes. Yeah. And you know, why why does that happen personally i feel like it's because the people with the most money in this hobby are the people that are doing the scamming like like there are too many people that have take bbc for for example how many people have millions of dollars of sealed wax like the upper end of this hobby doesn't want BBCE to fail because they're going to lose money. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they don't care if it hurts you, Joe. They don't care if it hurts yeah. you, EP. Like, who are you? You're just a collector. You're just a guy mm -hmm. buying a box of cards you saved up money for because you're excited to open it. It doesn't matter to them if you open it up and you have GI Joe cards in it because they want to make sure that their investment is going to maintain its value and go up in value. And I, I really feel like that's the biggest issue this hobby has, you know, backyard breaks. Oh, well, like, look at all the product that they can push for us. Like, well, we don't care if they screw people over. Like they're, they're pushing to the point all the this fanatics product. even went to them to team up. Yeah. You yeah, know, who like, was it? Josh Lube? Was it Josh Luber? Is that in my sense? Yeah. Is that I the correct think guy? was his name. Yeah. Uh, but he goes and like pairs up with backyard breaks. A mere month when I saw them not give away that Trevor Lawrence card, I remember texting you guys being like, oh, thank God these guys are done. Mm -hmm. These guys are going to get canceled. There's no they're way not. they're going to survive right. this. And they made some bullshit video with a couple of wads of $100 bills saying, we're going to donate this money to the Boys and Girls Club. First off, did anyone call to verify that? Yeah, really. And, and secondly, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. You're literally just buying off your screw up like you're paying off someone to make yourself look good after you had this massive screw up and it's just it's just gross it's it's really really just that's the only word i can use to describe it. it's just really gross it is what yeah. what, the, what all of them are doing with the bbc thing you bring up a really good point mike that if they go down you know people like sports card investor who has tons of wax he's mm -hmm. a huge wax guy He's thinking to himself, well, if they go down, that's going to call into question all the wax that I have, and mm -hmm. that's going to make those prices go down. I, it's not the same thing, but the, the only analogy I can think of is if I see a Tom Brady rookie card on eBay, right, and I, I want to get it cheap. I'm like, oh, it's only $300. Maybe I can put in a $305 bid. 
one side of my brain says, I really want this card really cheap. The other part of my brain says, if this card goes really cheap, that's going to cheapen the value of my other Tom Brady card. So I kind of don't want that to happen. I want to be outbid by thousands of dollars. That's kind of what it makes me think of with this. Like, sure, they pr probably think BBC, BBC, he should go down and probably will eventually if they keep doing this. But they I don't, don't know that want they them will, to. though. That's will true. They? Because like, they people are still going to send them stuff yeah like i don't know they're they're pretty much the name in authenticating wax mm -hmm. so you know people like you said if sports card investor has tons of money tied up in it he's never going to say a bad word about him is he because he doesn't want to hurt his, his investment and there right. are a lot of people out there like that and that's what i'm saying like i see so much happen from the upper end of the hobby with the people with the most money in it that they they just allow it to happen because at the end of the day, they don't want to lose any money off it. So yeah, we don't care if they screw over the regular collector and the only people that get hurt are the regular collectors, which I would argue if the regular collectors leave the market again, all that stuff people have put away that they think is going to be worth a lot of money isn't going to be worth it anyway, because you need the people who are actually collectors to be part of this for the investors to be able to make money. I just, yep. I don't know. The whole thing is gross show. And it like, it really pisses me off to be honest, because you know, it's, it's the little guy that ends up being screwed by all of it. I think a lot of things that contribute to it also is uh, how do we get our news? It's Twitter and it's Facebook and it's Instagram mm -hmm. and we're scrolling. And if it's, if it's, if you see one thing about it, but they don't see anything else, um, you're not, it's not going to stick. HGA stuck because so many people talked about it. That, that, that's what, and that was a special been. case where it was PSA people going after HGA, well, right? For but reasonable but, reasons, but right, right. St but still, it, the, I think the thing is, you need the influence influencers to be the ones talking about it and get their the fan bases all riled up, and then also it gets talked about. And like you get, like you were saying, Mike, like BBCE, like they're they're the influencers that are. are Hooked into BBCE aren't going to be the ones aren't going to keep pushing that that narrative. Yeah, of course not. They're not going to you know, bite their own hand, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. Kind of gross situation there, but you know, one of the other things that came out of that too is, which is going to lead into a little bigger topic I wanted to talk about here. But a lot of people were criticizing the actual influencers that were on stage like that we're opening up the packs of cards. I know I saw, you know, card collector two, I saw sports card investor. I saw Pac-Man. What's the other guy? Blez. Was he the one that hit the Blaise, Jordan? Blez. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It was ridiculous when they hit the Jordan, but I digress, but yeah, but people are, you know, kind of getting on those people for not mentioning anything about it, not bringing up anything about it. I think that's a little bit of a tricky situation. First of all, some of them, I don't think had any idea personally right. watching the videos. I do think that Pac-Man knew something was off. Like you could just you could tell by like, his reaction, yeah, like by the time he got to the sticker, he was like, what's going on here? But you know, I, Am I, I being punked. Yeah. Am I being punked on the stage. But I can understand, like what, like, what? That's an awkward situation to be put in. You know, you're what not bought this box to have you guys open on the main stage at the national. Yeah, like what is that the time and place to go? Hey, wait a minute, there. This box is not real. Something was searched. I, I don't think that. This. I don't think the time and place is on stage. But did Pac-Man come out with a video afterwards? Like. He has a massive, mm -hmm. massive subs uh, subscriber base. I, I haven't heard boo from him about it. Maybe or will, any of them or, or yeah. any of them, you know, saying, hey, I just opened up this pack and it was it was off. I mentioned something to the guys at whatnot, whatever, whatever. Like, I, I don't understand how he couldn't go out. Maybe maybe they didn't know. Maybe we're giving Pac-Man too much credit. Maybe we're giving all of them too much credit that if I knew Sadly, if I knew this, they should have known this. You know, I'm not a basketball mm -hmm. guy. I, I was six years old and when this product came out, uh, but I knew about it. So uh, the fact that he didn't go out and do any sort of video or any sort of, you know, comment about it at all, it's kind of, you know, come on, you have, and and I'm going to shout out our, our guy Ziggy, you know, who's um, 
who's shouted out uh, us a couple of times, but he he's talked about this before. You know what 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 is the influencer's responsibility? I think Pac Man is the perfect example because he has, and we love him. We watch his videos, but he has this huge subscriber base that he could reach and say this wasn't right. Something's going on with this box. Someone should know about it. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I don't. I, I've never opened eighty six uh, Fleer basketball, and I, I I knew there was some sort of thing with the sequence. But if I was opening it myself, I would not know. As I'm as I'm going through the cards, I wouldn't know without looking at the back if they were in sequential order or if they were whatever. So I, I don't know. Unless you you watched a ton of breaks, I don't know if it's something as you're breaking it if you're going to realize. Uh, but in, if in you my see opinion. everyone's names in alphabetical order, I well, think you I mean, pick yeah. up on that. Yeah. You yeah. know, like like four or five Johnsons in a row, which insert joke here. But, you know, I mean, that's something you can pick up on pretty, pretty easily. And I just by the way, I just checked them on my phone. Sports card investor has said nothing about this. This is a guy who loves oh, to be sure. on, on camera. Mm. He hasn't said a word about it. And I'm sure he'll come out with some video like real heartfelt, like we might have a problem in the hobby. But Steve Hart's still a great guy and does does great work for the hobby. I'm sure it'll be one of those type of videos. And, you know, it's just you can just smell the fakeness from from a mile away. True. So true. Yeah. And, you know, like you mentioned, Joe, Ziggy No from Sports Card Show. Uh, we like to watch his videos. He shouted us out a few times. We appreciate that. And, you know, he brought up something about our last podcast when we were talking about the, the breaker that had announced that they had an exclusive deal with Fanatics. And that was something I wanted to get into today because, like, his point, and I do understand his point, is that Fanatics did not make any kind of press press release. They had no announcement about this. I don't know if the breaker who said it took it down, took the it post seemed like down. it looked like they did. Yeah, I mean, they definitely did have a post announcing it. And he was kind of calling out, you know, the content creators, us included, uh, for reporting this and reporting it as a fact when, you know, really nobody really knows what's going on. And EP, this is something I really wanted to get your opinion on because you're in newspaper editing. You've been doing this for a long time. So my question to you is I, I see a breaker as a business, you know, they're selling a, a service, a product. And if, a business comes out with a press release or something on their social media saying, Hey, we just signed this deal. What do you think a content creator's responsibility is in? Are we responsible for digging up to making sure that's the truth? Are we just supposed to report it because they're reporting it? How would it work like in the real world, like with a newspaper? Oh, the newspaper, we would have double checked with, you know, the, we would check multiple sources. There's a, a saying in, in the newspapering that if, uh, if your mother says she loves you, check it out, you know, get a second okay. source, get ch check on it. So, um, that would be so, you know, but I think, um, I think you, content creators are a little bit different. There's a lot of reactionary stuff where in journalism and newspapers, we're not reacting. We are reporting what somebody else says and then getting reactions from experts and other people and then then reporting that information as well. And I think um, um, I think it, content creators depends on what their what their lane is and what, what they want to do, whether they're reacting or they're you know digging deep in for these stories. Like, you know, you, uh, there's a, sp a spot for both of those. Uh, I think uh, probably um, middle ground is probably the best best way to go. Um, and and. First off, I want to say the fact that he included us with like some of the big content creators, like we're, <laughs> we're actual influencers yeah. was like the we best part of that. We are not <laughs> influencers until you have people out there buying nineties wax and opening them up all over YouTube. We have no influence. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but, uh, you know, for me, I kind of, when, when you pose this question to EP in our group thread, the first thing I thought of is like, we're not us i don't i'm not going to speak for anyone else the three of us we are not c-span right where they're just putting a camera and they're reporting news and fact you know they're just showing what's happening we're not that i think of us as depending on what your persuasion is we're msnbc or fox news yes uh, you know, editorials yep. we are reacting yep. to things mm -hmm. that are yep. happening and that was a story that came out 
A lot of folks had reported on it. We saw a lot of videos on it. So we were almost giving our reaction to those videos and also giving our reaction to the story, right? The news that came out. Um, so for our responsibility, I mean, out of the content creators, I think, and we've, we've shouted them out a couple of times now, Sports Card Radio, they're, they're, they're ones who actually go in and mm -hmm. dig they into really actual job. issues. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, again, might think it's negative, but we need that sometimes, you know, we need a slap in the face. Um, so for us, I think more of us is editorial, you know, just, just, right. you know, people who are just throwing out our opinions, if, like we would, if we were out on the golf course, you know, playing 18 and we were just complaining about 1986 Fleer <laughs> <laughs> basketball boxes, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like um, it's uh, we're, we're if anybody just posed that question, what happens if fanatic signs breakers? Like that, that's mm -hmm. the, we're kind of reaction reacting to that situation as opposed to reporting on a story. If you're reporting yeah. on a story, then you want to make sure to check all the sources and everything. We were kind of reacting to this, you know, this is something that that is happening in the hobby or, or could be happening in the hobby. I think that's that's kind of where we are. Yeah. yeah, that's what I had said to you too. I felt like we're more an editorial piece. We're not a news piece. Like we we're giving our opinions. We're not out here. We're not doing the work. We're not the people that are digging up these stories. We're seeing what's being said in the hobby and what stories are going around. And we're you know whether you like it or not, we're just giving our opinions on it. And hopefully you like to listen to them if you don't i really don't know why you're this far into the podcast listening <laughs> to it anyway doesn't make any sense so yeah but you know we we just like to talk about it we're not out here doing any of the dirty work we're just reacting to what others have come out with and what's going on in the hobby almost as if me and joe walked into the card shop and you were behind right. the counter we started talking about it Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, exactly. that's what this whole show is supposed to be. Like, people don't don't know what my shop was like, but <laughs> trust me, like I'm standing behind the counter, and Joe and EP are on the other side of the counter. We're just talking, maybe a little more edited, maybe a little cleaner that's on the podcast bit. here <laughs> bit, yeah. than maybe the discussions we've had in the past. But yeah, that that's what we aim to bring you. So yeah, I think we're all pretty much on the same page as that. Uh, one other little piece of news I wanted to throw out there. I'll shock you guys with this one. Uh, our old buddies at PSA, Nat Turner was actually interviewed by sports card investor at the national and talking a little bit about the plans for the pricing of their grading service. And he, he did say they were actually kind of surprised with the number of submissions they got for $18. I don't know how. Come yeah, on. Get, get you, you get are, are you just whatever? Just yeah. shut up. Yeah. Like, right, you weren't right. surprised. Oh, I'm so humbled. I'm I know. So like, come like, on. Oh. Just stop. I like Nat Turner. Let me just say, like, he's a pretty fun guy. And he's, you know, he interacts with, with Joe. Folks. Yes. Yes. He has had his, his fun with me on Twitter. Yeah, he has. And, you know, he helped me out a lot with my issues with them when I had my order there. But, uh, he, the big thing was you can tell that the prices are going down like he i think they're expecting to announce a lower lower price point sometime in august and that might not be where it ends up at he said it might not be 18 dollars yet but they definitely like we said in previous podcasts want to get that number down and it'll be interesting to see how low that's gonna go and the one big takeaway I took out of that, too, was he said he wants to have a 90-day turnaround on their lowest price level. So they want wow. to get the price down, and they want to get stuff. Joe is just waiting. They want to get stuff back in 90 days. So, Joe, cool. you're going to grade with PSA? <laughs> Um, Come on, no. you know you want what? to. You know you I, want it, to. What price would so they have to go to? What price they have they to pay to? me ten dollars a card? <laughs> um, no, I, I mean I was I was telling you guys about this before, but you know my my partner he. he, he he had some Pokemon cards from when he grew up and I was going through them. I know nothing about Pokemon, so I'll probably end up bringing them to Danville to have you guys look at, but they're in really good shape. I jokingly said you had no friends when you were a kid. So you, uh, you just <laughs> you put the cards the in the pages, right? But, um, so they're in really good shape and I'm like, oh, 
I'm going to have to have EP send these to PSA because I <laughs> told our viewers, I refuse. I put it here in the pod. I refuse to grade with PSA, but I will send those cards to EP to send to PSA on my <laughs> I They probably will be able to get to 90 days. They've gotten the backlog done. It probably will happen. I wish they would have thought of this about a year and a half ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't surprise me. They Apparently everything that's been coming out has been churning pretty quickly quickly mm -hmm. back to the back to the uh submitters so i'm guessing they'll be able to hit that number he said they're grading fifty thousand cards a day that's bananas <laughs> that's have, have they ever said how many greater how many graders there are oh i don't know i did see something about that at one point mm -hmm. i think there were like 400 the last i saw but i'm not okay. sure now but and he said the second facility is open now too and you know fifty thousand. By day. the way, that is bananas and it's a big number, but that's also a big number of graders. So for those of you out there who think PSA's grading is consistent, <laughs> they may be worth more on the secondary yeah. market for sure. They definitely are, but the consistency level is not, not good over there. So if you want to grade cards for your PC and you want consistency, <laughs> PSA is probably not the way you want to go. There are other grading companies out there, a couple of them that are probably much better on a consistent level. SGC is not paying us any money, Joe. They are not. No, I meant <laughs> I, I was saying SGC or CSG. Oh, either okay. one can pay us if they want to, by the yeah. way. Hit us up. We are open for business and we will talk <laughs> glowingly about your company. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, hopefully I did not infect anybody with COVID and whew, this was a tough one, but we got through it and we'll be back next week. Take care, guys. See you, boys. See ya.